we'll be using the make classification function in order to create artificial data sets that will be useful for testing and understanding and playing with the scikit-learn library. So the make classification function is included in the scikit-learn uh, library, specifically in the scikit-learn.datasets package. Uh, in order to import it, we need to execute this first uh, line. An important element here is when that when we are doing uh, or solving classification problems in machine learning, we typically have a certain uh, amount of features, so feature 1, feature 2, and so on. And then we have a label or class that we want to predict. And typically we have numeric values here, so this is like 12.2, uh, let's say 45. Then we have our values, and then we have a 1, or a 0, or a 2, but they represent classes. So 0 might represent a woman, for example, or female, or a 1 might represent a male, or a 1 might represent whether a person is paying or not a loan, and a 0 if that person is not paying the loan. So this represents um, categories. And when we read this data, they might be encoded as letters like A, B, C, or D, or they might be already encoded as 0 or 1, or something like that. So, an important element is that when we are working with real problems, the way this happens is that we load a data set, uh, either from a CSV file, or we uh, import the data from a database, or we pull the data from the web, or something else. The essential issue is that we will load data that is already um, or or that already exists, so real data. What we'll be doing here in this um, video will be uh, something a little different. We'll be using this make classification function to generate ar artificial data. This won't be real data. Uh, you won't be using this function at all in real scenarios. But it is very, very useful for testing and understanding and knowing what to do when you get a real problem in machine learning. So let's uh, jump into the parameters that we have here. The first parameter is the n underscore samples, which is how many observations I want. In my case, I put, I put 100. Then um, I have the number of features that I want. So this will be the number of variables that I will be using. In this case, it will be two. Then I need to specify how many of them I want them to be informative. In this case, I have two of them that I want uh, to be informative, so I put two and two. And then the number of redundant one, which is uh, in my case zero. So naturally, the number of redundant plus the number of informative uh, must be equal to two. Obviously, uh, an acceptable solution would be something like this. Now. An important element here is that we need to specify how many classes we want. So remember that in the previous examples I said, well, you can have a one or a zero or a female or a male. So certainly you can have more complex scenarios. You can have, <coughs> for example, five classes. Um, so this will be encoded as zero, one, two, three, and four. Uh, they might be representing uh, different different categories. Now. The important thing is that scikit-learn will enforce a restriction between the number of classes that we use, the number of clusters per class that we use, and the number of informative uh, features that we have. But before jumping into that, let's explain what's uh, clusters per class. So uh, this will tell um, scikit-learn that we want the observations to be clustered into two groups here. I could certainly use a zero here, and all the observations would be like um, just uh, randomly distributed within each class. Uh, but if I specify clusters per class, for example, equal to two, if I look specifically inside each one of these clusters, I will see inside these classes, I will see two clusters of observations, and this, the same will happen for clusters for class A and class B or class 0 and class 1. I will, I will be observing two clusters. Going back into what I was saying a minute ago, um, there is a restriction here. Um, 
So let's see what that uh, restriction does. So if we run uh, this, we'll see that this will throw an error. So uh, here this says that the number of classes times the number of clusters per class in this case I have uh, 5 times 2, uh, that's 10, must be smaller or equal to 2 or um, the number of informatives. So this is uh, essentially 2, which is obviously, assume, as you might already know, this is equal to 4. So obviously 10 is greater than 4 and this won't run. Um, so essentially what I, uh, what uh, Python and Scikit-Learn is telling us is that the number of informative uh, features or the number of features that are useful is not sufficient to generate five classes and two clusters inside each class. So certainly that won't work, but this will work because I will have two times two will be equal to four. So this will run, hopefully won't take too long. So here I have my result. Uh, so let's see what um, this looks like. So this will be a tuple uh, containing two elements. The first, or both elements, will be arrays. Uh, the first element will have the features. It will have two columns. So column one will correspond to the first feature, and column two will correspond to the second feature. And the second element of the tuple will be another array containing zeros and ones. This is because number of classes is equal to two. If, if this was three, um, I would observed, I would have observed zero, one, and two. So we are almost ready, and this data can certainly be used for um, machine learning classification algorithms. An important element is that I told Scikit-Learn that both uh, features should be informative. So when I run all the algorithms that uh, identify what are the, uh, the best variables to retain in the algorithm, those algorithms should, in theory, tell me that I should be keep keeping both um, features because both of them are, were used to generate these uh, zeros and ones. And finally, uh, this is a very, very important thing, is how do we extract each one of these components for uh, doing real machine learning? So this is very easy. We can just um, execute x1 like this, and this will pull the first um, the, or the second element here. If I want the features, I can do x0, and then I have the information here. So uh, I can split this very easily, and I can certainly use these two arrays in any machine learning algorithm that I want.